Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we are going to channel with Louise Hay from The Afterlife. Louise Hay is the founder of Hay House Publishing Company, and she is most notably known for her trailblazing ways and helping us to heal ourselves and working with how to heal yourself and in addition as a major advocate for spirit spirit based and self development books and things so I feel connected to Louise Hay. I think it's a good time for us to be able to connect with her. And she's kind of been like a spiritual mentor to me at times when I've had difficulty in my life or needed some advice or guidance from the entrepreneurial perspective or from the spirit perspective and from the healer perspective. So I think it's a perfect time to be able to invite Louise Hay back in to visit and channel with her. Now remember, at Above Life Channel, there are playlists. So there are lots of other afterlife celebrity guest channel interviews that you can check out on the playlist. Louise Hay is one of those types that has a playlist here. Guest of honor, Louise Hay. Come on in, Louise. She says, hello, Bridget. How are you doing? Well, I think I'm doing okay. She says, there's quite a bit going on. There's a lot going on in your world, isn't there? There sure is. Is this something that you can help shed some light on? Oh, of course. She says, of course I'll try. I will most certainly try to inspire your spirit, she says, and leans forward. Thank you, Louise. It's so lovely to talk with you, you guys. Let's connect our heart chakras and activate our heart chakra, our heart space, because the empathic energy that Louise brings forward helps to connect us and create a space for you to feel the benefit of the channeling as I'm sharing the dialogue and using the words. Feel the energy as it shifts and flows. Ooh, and I feel the chill of the wind on the back of my neck <laughs> as soon as I said that. Whoa. All right. So, Luis, give us something that we can feel into. Some words of wisdom or guidance during this time. There have been many trying times on the planet. The one thing that you know for certain that you can count on is that the earth will survive. There are always times of drought and times of famine and times of replenishment and nourishment. There's times of flourishing and abundance. Throughout all of these times you have survived. And it's not simply a matter of survival. That's perhaps, perhaps let's talk about that, Bridget. Perhaps that is the most important thing to remember now is that it's not a time of simply surviving. That is the basic human need or necessity that you are often presented with when you watch the news media and things of that nature. It is easy to get sucked into the story and the storylines and become part of the, the chaos that is being spread. That's the most infectious disease that there is, is the chaotic worry and the fear it spreads like wildfires and it doesn't even help to rejuvenate it simply devastates anyone in its path that's not to say some level of fear is healthy or natural it is and you shouldn't make any one part of yourself bad for having those kinds of feelings it's natural to be worried when it is a time of great change there's a lot of anticipation. Let, let us be clear about the energies of fear and, and anticipation. The unknown is a great vast place that there oftentimes is a desire for the illusion of clarity, the illusion of the knowing or the predictability of things. And as you can see, the truth is there is no predictability. It is indeed a co-creative universe and that which has come together to create the time that you are collectively in is a patterning of life that has been called for, called forward. Now the very nature of the, the viral challenge or the virus that you are facing, the, the health, I'm going to choose the word crisis here, that you are facing isn't necessarily the, the choice of or the optimal experience. However, that said, it would have been something, a major 
something major or massive, not just a particular act of nature like a flood, tsunami, a, a force of nature, of wildfires that would focus on one particular area because that has been the case. If you look back over your history over the past two to three years, and perhaps even five years, you can start to see the precursors of these, these attempts to correct the patterning of human behavior. And it has resulted in small incremental improvements, but not anything long-term or widespread, probably more appropriate to say the, the widespread. And it's important that the virus of the mind be addressed during this time. There is not a need to pressure yourself or to compare yourself. Now, comparison is something that causes more pain and more suffering. Comparison is not something, not a tool to be used at this time, not even not even a little bit, not even in the smallest amount, although it does seem that data-driven information is key as far as facts or understanding patterns of truth, what is true versus what is illusion. But I would caution you in believing any one thing or placing your focus or emphasis rather, instead of believing you guys, let's say, focus your emphasis on the on one particular place or source of information and simply allow yourself to be with yourself in the pattern of belief and feeling that is your thought and your emotion that is moving through you and forward for you and let that provide the information that helps to instruct your day that helps to break down time into smaller increments that are much more manageable for you as a human being and then in society when there is the opportunity to rejoin the others in your community circles then there will be this very strong awareness of self and in that strong awareness and sense of self then you can be much more confident in the bridge of connection that you make with others and then the ripple effects will be much more powerful and long-standing. Longevity is something that the human experience craves. It, it sees it as a way of, of success or measuring success, longevity, and yet it is the quality of the experiences that you're having. So it is the quality or the depth of the understanding of the connections. And, and you're seeing that now because there's this craving or realization that connection is, it, it does really matter. And so too, then the values of kindness and compassion and empathy toward one another, regardless of the, the similarities or the differences that you may have with, with other individuals or communities or societies, it, it really does come to show that there is much room for improvement and advancement. And it does depend upon you as an individual during this time. Again, I want to be very clear, it is not the action of what you are accomplishing in your personal life, but the fact that you are connecting with your personal center of power, your personal spirit, your beyond and deeper and broader than your intuition, but so much more. You are so much more than that. You are a wellspring of knowledge and information that can really serve you as a person. It can really be a great advisor to the mind. And spending more time in yourself can bring about a great amount of change in a way that is much more peaceful in the pattern that you create moving forward in your behaviors and in your comfort level. And yet, at the same time, acknowledging that once you reintegrate with others in your society, there will be change that occurs and shows up and, and some after effects or ripples. And that, that is natural. There will be some bumps in the road. That will be natural. Some of you will love coming back together in connection very easily, readily sociable, but yet others will want to be more empathic in their distancing and create room and space for those relationships to reattach in a way that is healthy and positive, more so than, than perhaps has been before. And that, that causes you to really think about boundaries and what it is that you need for your rules of engagement. What do you need? And 
uh, an opportunity is upon you to consider what are your needs. What do you like about this time that you are in when you are separated from others? And what do you not like? What do you dislike? That, that, those two things will give you information about how it is that you best can connect moving forward with yourself and with others. And that is going to be a great a great learning piece, a great valuable point of this entire experience collectively. There's a lot, there's a great deal of benefit that can come from that. Now it depends on how everyone does their homework, of course. Right, okay, can you, wow, okay, let me just get a second here. Wow, that's a lot. Louise, hey, ladies and gentlemen, can you talk to us specifically about health? And if you can, let us know, is there, are there some things that we need to be aware of or considerate of as we move forward here, given our health? Well-being is a, a, a huge part of your success as a person, as a human. And it is really an individual choice and also a responsibility to care for the human body. And part of caring for the human body also involves managing the thoughts that create the behaviors that result in the actions that make you who you are. And those behavior patterns have the opportunity to destroy you or to guide you through just about anything that you encounter. That you may see as turbulent or challenging or difficult, your body really is a strength for your fortress. And it is not a shelter to hide in at this time. It's a shelter to love and embrace and decorate with all the wonderful energies of your your heart and your 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 desires and all that you love and all that you are. To really come to a point where the energy of health is indicative of the wellness that you can offer within your own self. The mindset and the body, the mind and the body do work very closely together. It is important that the needs of the mind and the body are met. And that's critical. That is critical. Mission critical. So Louise, can you give us any kind of insight as to uh, when here, like I'm in the United States, when here we're going to be able to kind of get back to a routine where we're going to be able to be in the public and be with each other and be at the grocery stores and that kind of a thing. What are the shopping malls and the movie theaters and things? I'm seeing July, it looks like, kind of, you guys, that it gets to more of a normal looking kind of experience. But she says people are going to make a people are going to make choices about what is best for them and their families and so there's going to be some arguments it feels like some conflict inside um families you guys should from what she's showing me there's gonna be some arguments inside families i could totally see this about where people are going and how much contact they have with other people like if they go to the movies or that kind of thing and like a sporting event or things and there's like people that are uh, it's so it's so difficult to see like i can't even really see that i can see a movie theater but i can't see the like a sports arena i can't see that or a concert or anything like that maybe like an orchestra orchestra hall or something like that i could see but i can't see like a sporting event where there's contact you know with people like the players and things I don't know though. I mean, it could August too. Also, looks like a time where maybe some sports start to come, like baseball and things like that. Professional league maybe start to come. Maybe I can't quite tell for sure. Um, I don't really like to do predictions, but I can kind of. I'm, I'm curious, and so I wanted to ask for Lisa. We might as well ask her because she's easy to connect with. <laughs> I can connect with her pretty well. So, thank you for that input. Thank you very much. All right, you guys, so this is a conversation with Louise Hay in the afterlife, as I said, we have channeled her before. So she has a playlist here at Above Life Channel. Make sure you check it out so that you can get some inspiring energy from the afterlife. She definitely helps with healing, helps us to love ourselves and know ourselves better. She is a, a very gentle but powerful force when I connect with her in the afterlife. I really do appreciate our conversations together, and you do make me feel so good. Very pink energy, heart space energy, and also very yellow, solar plexus, spirit chakra, purpose, that kind of an energy 
connection for you as well. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching the Both Life channel here on YouTube. If you like a Both Life channel and the Afterlife celebrity guests that we channel every week here, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a weekly channeling session. And remember that the purpose is always to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this is your life after all. So now live it. Get out there. Well, stay in here and live it. Just live it.